All right, everybody. Uh, Thanks for hanging Christmas out tonight. Drag. There you go. Nice to see everybody uh, in the chat. You guys are uh, a bunch of chatty Cathy's. I like to see that. So thanks for hanging out tonight. My name is David. I am your humble dungeon master. And we're going to be playing the DDEX2 Adventure League series for the Elemental Evil storyline. And we have done six sessions already. We're already on session number seven. And we're in the Embers of Elwood. <clears throat> Elmwood. So we're going to continue tonight. We have uh, four players ready to play. And I'll let them introduce themselves. So, Robert, uh, let everybody know who you are, and we'll uh, get going. Uh, I'm Robert Aducci. Uh, I'm the community manager for D&D Adventures League, and I do social media for uh, uh, Fantasy Grounds, and I'm playing Trayvac Lonehammer, a uh, dwarven fighter. All right. Good to see you, Robert. James, introduce yourself. I'm James Holloway, the production coordinator for Smartworks, and I'm playing Curlioa Darkspire. Carl, how's it going? Good. Um, Carl Pinder, I'm a developer at Smiteworks, and I'm going to be playing uh, Philo Goblin Sticker, the uh, Halfling Fighter. All right. And last but not least, Doug, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Doug Davison. I'm the president of Smiteworks, and uh, I'll be playing Gildan, a uh, high elf rogue. All right. So a couple weeks ago, we left off in the Culkin Estate. And you guys had a pretty interesting time, so I'll let, uh, uh, I believe the only person that was here last time was uh, Curlioa and Gildan. So if you guys kind of want to give a brief recap on what happened a couple weeks ago uh, of the chaos that ensued during that session, I'm sure everybody would love to hear it. <laughs> that was pretty well, crazy. Uh... <laughs> Especially Chris. Well, we, we uh, tried to infiltrate a temple because... Uh... Well, we we went to the aid of of someone who was uh, uh, important to the house that we were serving uh, at the party, and they uh, they sent us to find a girl who had washed up, and they they had taken the girl to the to the temple uh, of pain, <laughs> and then we uh, so we infiltrated the temple house by yeah. house, house of pain, suffering. Yeah. And the House of was, uh, House of Ravia. <laughs> yeah. was Ravia. Ravia or Ravia, however you want to say it. Yeah. So we went to, went to the temple. Uh, the, the dwarf uh, had an idea to uh, light himself on fire. He took a, a resist fire potion, lit himself on fire, looked crazy, wa uh, rolled around everywhere, touched just about everything in the, ha in the t temple, started everything on fire <laughs> to distract the guards. And uh, Curlio, Curlio Darkspire went in there as an old, doddering old uh, fool, as a uh, a priest of the temple, from a, from a different temple though. Uh, he went in there and the, he kind of distracted the priests, and then Gildan, I believe, snuck to the back and, and got the girl out, covered her in a sheet, and dragged her, <laughs> knocked her head on a pole, so we stuffed her in a barrel, <laughs> got a ride with a a, car, a uh, carriage <laughs> knocked the guy in the carriage out took it all without being seen <laughs> and that's about it it was great and then and then you left the and I remember you in particular you left the uh, money for the person that you actually stole the card from <clears throat> yeah so that was yeah. that was pretty cool without uh, because I, I think if uh, I think if Rachel was here, she probably would have given him and stole everything. <laughs> she, yeah. She, she kind of lean. She's kind of leaning towards the the murder hobo part of the of the scale. The, <laughs> the body count <laughs> may have been a little bit higher yeah. if Rachel would, would have been with us. Yeah. Well, you got inside the Culkin estate. You met uh, her servant, which was his name was Dawson. Very polite guy. You know, he took you to the second floor of the estate took you to Lady Calkin's chambers and she was sitting there. You guys had a little conversation. She told you that everything in her estate was uh, available for you to use. You were you know, more than welcome to stay for as long as you wanted as well. Now we'll get back to the, the map of the estate with my unbelievably great cartographical uh, skills with uh, calligraphy. I guess it would be calligraphy. Uh, <laughs> 
So Ravi is in, in the first room on the second floor. She is with Dawson and two of Lady Culkin's elite guard. And I remember Gildan's in room number two, Curlia was in three, uh, Thyla was in four, and uh, yeah, Lady Culkin retired from the library to her room, and then uh, Graven, he stayed down on the first floor in the library. That's where he wanted to stay. He was infatuated with all of those books and all of that lore and the hundreds of different uh, areas uh, of history and medicine and magic and all that stuff. I remember also, Gildan, you were kind of hoping Lady Culkin would, because she is a pretty, she's a, you know, a, a pretty beautiful woman, and I remember that you were leaving your door open for her or something like that. You kept looking down the hall to see if she was coming into your room, <laughs> but then Curly Oa knocked <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> This is Curly Oa. Uh, hey, how's it going, bud? Yeah. Want to play some cards? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So we were at the point where everybody was retiring for the evening. Whether, you know, you go to sleep or you explore, you know, the estate and whatnot. Well, we've already kind of gone over that, but if you guys want to continue to explore, it's, uh, it's up to you. And also, uh, during all of this, there was a knock at the door with a familiar face. Trayvok has has hey. shown up. And you can go ahead and uh, let us know how you, know, how you found out about uh, what was going on here. Um, well, I guess uh, maybe somebody from the, from the temple, uh, from my old temple, kind of came to ask me what was going on. They, they heard a ruckus about the uh, Temple of... Uh, uh, what was the Temple of Suffering? Yep. Um, and I said, well, it can only be uh, Curlio and Gildan. And uh, look, <laughs> inquiring, uh, I kind of heard, heard the goings-on and uh, decided uh, they could use my help. Yeah, because Lady Saj, because you guys were still more than welcome to stay at the Saj, the Saj estate, seeing that you know, her multiple 10-day celebration is over, uh, you guys have done a great job for her. She appreciated everything that you've done for her, everything that you've done for all of her colleagues, as she calls them. Uh, so she's given you, you know, permission to stay there at the estate. Plus, it's nice to have some, I guess you could say, force that that's still kind of living on, living on the property. But yeah, she she told you that because uh, you were out doing things, and she had told you that the rest of the the members had gone to one of her other, one of the only other houses in Mallmaster that she actually trusts. And, you know, and to hear that come from her, uh, Trayvok, that was, that was kind of surprising to hear her say that she actually trusts another house, because usually that doesn't happen in Mallmaster. So that's, that's when you basically showed up at the, uh, the front door. Uh, Dawson had showed you in, very nice, polite fel fellow. Probably, I would say, probably middle 50s or so. Very, very soft-spoken. And uh, he has taken you up to the second floor. And you have all of these rooms. He tells you that uh, your traveling companions are in the three most northern rooms. Do not, you know, you do not go to the room on the eastern wing because that is Lady Culkin's private chambers. All right. So... I'm uh, listening at the at the door to Ravia's room, and I uh, probably hear the knock and, and recognize Trayvok's voice. Yeah. So when when I hear that, I'll I'll put my wine glass down to the side and kind of pop my door open and, and lean out as he comes in and goes, "Hey, Trayvok, I'm uh, glad you found us. Come on in." Hey, Gildan. I'll uh, make my way up, upstairs and over over to Gildan and say, uh, "I heard you guys have uh, gotten in trying to get in trouble without me." Well, you know, it was all Philo's doing. You know, he had this this whole elaborate plan, that and uh, you know, we we just followed it to a T. It, it was a beautiful thing. You should have seen uh, it. it, it uh, did he get eaten by a giant frog again? <laughs> there were no there were no giant frogs that we saw, at least. <laughs> but you never know when one is stalking. Mm -hmm. And everything in the everything in the manor is is beautiful, Trayvok. Everything is in you know the colors of like crimson and cream. That's the, basically the the house colors and what they use on all of their heraldry and symbols and whatnot. And this place was, was rather large. Uh, there is uh, quite a few chambers. There was a, a beautiful grand room on the bottom. There was a, a gallery 
uh, a massive kitchen Dawson had told you that help yourself to the kitchen and you know as Dawson was kind of you know giving you the the grand tour of this place the kitchen was an absolute mess uh, looks like everybody else has already been in here and Dawson just kind of sighs and says it looks like there's going to be no sleep for me tonight uh, there's a, a beautiful dining hall you see uh, uh, Graven is kind of passed out in the library he's got four or five books kind of opened up and slumbered on his chest and one over an arm one over his face you try to wake him up but he's just he's just snoring Matt he's just a he's sawing logs basically uh, there is also a, a, a very small little room that uh, had a very very weird looking copper basin with a lot of you know herbs and uh, different uh, you know kind of smelt like a like a like a I guess I guess sorry to say it like this but sort of like a like a French whorehouse you walked in and there was all these you know uh, plants hanging down herbs and all these other remedies and it seems like this is sort of like a uh, uh, a place where potions are made or any kind of strange concoction. There is a, a parlor, and then you know on the on the second floors were all of the rooms of the estate. But a very beautiful estate. I mean, it, a lot of dust. You can tell that there's not been a lot of people in here, uh, and also Lady Culkin. She does kind of stay to herself, and and Dawson tells you this, and he actually says it's kind of nice to actually have visitors because it actually gives him something to do when you guys leave. Uh, he gets to, you know, have a fun-filled day of cleaning everything up, except for when it comes to the kitchen. And he was like, ugh. Probably his least favorite thing to clean up, but that's the estate. So you guys are, are together now. It's uh, probably about 2, I would say it's probably equivalent to about uh, time-wise, probably 2 or 3 a.m. If he thinks the kitchen's bad, wait till he sees the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Really. So, Gildan, what, uh, I heard there's something about a girl. What are we doing here? Yeah, so, uh, and, and I'll usher him inside and, and wait till Dawson's kind of out of earshot and, and close the door and, and just say, uh, she's in the room right next to you here, and I'll hold the, my wine, I've got an empty wine glass that I kind of stick up to the, to the, uh, you know, side of the wall and kind of listen on and say, I'm listening to make sure that Dawson doesn't uh, interrogate her without us being present. Hmm. No. I, I so she was listening. she was knocked out, and she was from uh, the only ex, uh, the only survivor from the explosion in Elmwood. Correct. And uh, so all we really know is that uh, she mentioned something about fire and ash or or something like that before she passed back out again. And she said that several times, Gildan, as she awoken up, uh, you know, leaving the, the house of suffering to the Gildan estate. She had woken up several times, and well, the Culkin estate. She had said that a couple times. It may be the Gildan estate one day, especially if, you know, if Lady Culkin comes down into your room, it could end up being the, the Gildan estate later. We don't know. <laughs> um, why are you worried that uh, whoever, uh, who did you mention, will, will interrogate her without you? Not particularly worried about it, but you know, never trust anyone in Mole Master. Well, it's like uh, you know, I'll kind of refresh your mind a little bit too, Gildan. On this, remember, as you guys got to the estate, Lady Culkin gave you a little bit more information, and she had told you that the Hawks, which is sort of like the secret military police in Mole Master, one of their, you know, one of the higher ups or one of the leaders of the Hawks, word was that they were out to get this Ravia, or Ravia. And they wanted her to talk, basically, because nobody knows how, you know, Elmwood basically exploded and disappeared off the map. You know, and, and like uh, Lady Culkin was saying, she had a heavy investment into this small community, her house, and several of the other houses, too, but she was the major, uh, you know, owner of this of this area and that's why you know when you're the way one major resource of how you make your money is gone you're going to want to ask questions so her and her colleagues went out there and could not find out how elmwood disappeared off the map you know there was no no traces of magic nothing 
It wasn't magically induced. It, it wasn't any kind of uh, new technology, any kind of this blasting powder, nothing like that. It just basically exploded, big hole in the ground, and nobody knows why. Nobody knows how it happened. And the only survivor was this Ravi, and she come floating on top of a, a piece of one of the buildings that had, you know, storefront signage on it to where, you know, the eyes of Mole Master uh, got back word to Lady Culkin that this girl f floated right on into the, the harbor of, of Mole Master. So that's when the Hawks, they wanted to, you know, the Hawks, they wanted, that's my hillbilly accent, the Hawks, they wanted to get a hold of this girl. <laughs> here we are. They are incredible. Hulks. The, the Hawks. Hawks. <laughs> incredible Hulk. <laughs> Sometimes I, I forget the I'm from the South when I kind of... I can just hear a banjo playing in the background right now, you know. So they, you know, the too. Hawks, they wanted to get a hold of this, this Robbie girl. And, you know, as you would know, the Hawks, seeing that you are from Mall Master Trayvok, that... The Hawks kind of, rumor has it, they like to get rid of the evidence or get rid of people that they interrogate so that way they're not a, a burden on society and can't start any kind of rumors or anything like that. So that's where we're at. But she's in, she's in the, the southwestern room, and she's with two of Lady Culkin's elite guard and also with Dawson. And Dawson's in and out. You know, he's down... You know, cleaning up the kitchen, uh, and checking on Ravian. He's you know take taking in bowls of water and whatnot. So, so at the moment, it sounds like our kind of mission is to to watch over this girl, and and we're gonna talk to her tomorrow. I guess when she's in better shape or whatever. So, it sounds like some of her guard or Colgan, Lady Colgan's guard are already in there watching her. So, I will take it upon myself to sort of go outside and just kind of patrol the grounds and. And see what I can see. Sure. For for the night. Sure. So you guys wanted to, uh, to set up watches, and or are you wanting to do this for the entire night, or? Uh yeah, I'll just do it. Uh, since since she's already got guards in there, I will guard outside. Uh, okay. Trayvok is very protective. Uh, has a very protective nature. Okay. What about uh? What and Gildan will just stay up in a trance and kind of uh, you know listen. Okay. By the, by the wall here. Getting back your magic that was expelled from last time. I, I got it. How about uh, Philo? How about you? Oh, there's so many people guarding this girl that I don't really feel like I need to do anything but get some sleep. Sneaking into the ladies' room? <laughs> no, it's two, it's two in the morning. I had a very rough day of watching these guys ruin a plan. So, uh, <laughs> and burn it, burn it you succeeded. That's the important too, so. thing. <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> Half the city might be on fire, but we succeeded. We knew your inner plan. We knew that the one plan that you told us out loud was was just to throw off anyone who was listening, which was very brilliant of you oh, to yeah. do it that way. I remember Philo saying last week, that's not the plan that we discussed. <laughs> no. I don't remember setting anybody on fire. <laughs> but the whole great thing about that was he drank the resistant poison first, and then he, you know, continued to set himself on fire, which is like brilliant. And you yeah, know, there's, that's awesome. there's no, there's no dungeon master guide that can teach you how to, you know, expect players to do things like that. It's <laughs> so, it's so awesome. I, I loved it. I love creativity like that. So, all right, Curlio, what about you? Uh, Curlio is laying in bed, snoring loudly. Okay. <laughs> all right, so a little bit of time goes by, and. Uh, Trayvok. The night is is pretty quiet. And all of a sudden it, it, it seems like something bites your neck. It's sort of like a uh, like a big mosquito or something like that. And you when you go ow you notice that there is a, a small dart hanging out of your neck. Dun 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 So what, what what do you want to do with this dart hanging out of your neck? As as you're, uh, ow, I, ow. I take it out, t t take a look, look at out. it. Uh, what I mean, what does it look like? Sure, uh, it, it's a it's a dart about I'd say about two inches long, and it 
has this sticky substance on the needle. And, and as you're looking at it, things are starting to kind of get a little swirly around you and, and things are kind of like getting really close and then it, they're zooming way out and you're kind of like getting really lightheaded at this Quick, point. Quick, Ty, tourniquet. Is, this, is really, <laughs> this is really fast acting, uh, whatever's on this needle. Mm-hmm. So seeing that you're a, uh, you know, uh, traversed in medicine and, and, and whatnot, I think you are. No, you're not. So that's a... Uh, Oh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. But I will let you uh, do a, a check on this to see maybe you might know what it is. So uh, I would All say right. gave, uh, give me a, I would say an arcane. Uh, you can give me, I'll, I'll let you give me a, a couple of different things. I'll let you do whatever's best between, like, perception or maybe investigation or maybe something uh, nature-based. I'll, I'll take a. So I'll give you a couple uh, different ability scores. Perception. Yeah. I don't know. They're all they're all horribly bad. So I'm just gonna go to Arcana. See what we got. Twelve. All right. Uh, let's see. You would know that this stuff has a sort of like a a, a very foul smell, and this is actually something that's common in Mallmaster, and it's called slumber resin, and. Uh, resin and and you know that uh, this stuff makes you very queasy uh, as you are also going to take uh, one damage and, uh, and I'll, I'll give you one damage right now as well okay and you basically blacken out and you are now unconscious Ooh. now <clears throat> yes it, it but as you're as you take a sniff of the dart and you kind of tell that it's a very sticky, thick you know, substance, you're like, oh, this is slumber resin, it's not going to kill me, Poof, and then you black out. <laughs> Alright. So now... No save, huh? Uh, <laughs> or did you roll the save? No, I actually I, I rolled it on my end. So. Alright. <laughs> sure. Now on now the mansion. Now, Gildan, you were I think you were saying you were going to stay up first. And I know Curlio and Thilo, you guys are out zonked out. Ladies in her room. Now, Gildan, what were you doing again? Uh, I was kind of in a trance with uh, a glass up against this wall between my room and Ravia's room to just kind of listen to see, you know, make sure I didn't hear any noises or unusual sounds or anybody, you know, interrogating Ravia. If I hear Ravia's voice at all, if she wakes up. You don't hear Ravia's voice because I know that you've got the cup on the wall as well. Now, what you do hear is you hear... Uh, the sound of a couple things as you're kind of going back and forth between the window, the wall, kind of looking down the hall. You start to hear some rustling outside. And when you are opening up the window, you see this war machine collide into the estate. And there's, <laughs> there's a, a bunch of uh, humanoids behind this thing, you know, a lot of humans, uh, elves. Now, he... You you see this as you're looking out, and all of a sudden, this thing, bam! Goes right through the wall, and it just shakes the entire estate. Now, Curlio and Philo, now you guys are are woken up out of your hibernation, and (laughs) bam! the, The whole place just shakes and rumbles. And then it happens a second time also. But you don't see what happens, Gildan, because the, the first, you see this war machine with this huge log on the front of it, spikes off of it, you know, spikes two, three foot high, just come and bam, just come right through the hole. Now, through the side of the wall. Now, all of these humanoids, looks like a bunch of thugs and whatnot, are starting to pour into the estate. Now, back to Trayvok. Now, I want you to give me uh, a saving throw. And uh, I believe because you're a dwarf, you're going to get uh, advantage, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Yeah. Poison. Sure. Okay. So <laughs> now, <Double> 14. <laughs> after uh, you don't know how long you've been out, but as you kind of open up your eyes, you can see that there is a huge gaping hole in the side of the Colkin Estate, and you can see that there are 
elves and humans and a couple dwarves starting to and actually you start you, you see a couple of uh, they're carrying torches and whatnot they're you know starting a, a couple of the small little utility sheds on fire outside uh, a couple of the wooden canopies that you know have fountains in them and whatnot looks like the Culkin estate is definitely being raided uh -huh. and, and from what you've seen there's probably a couple of dozen of these uh, humanoids piling into the side of this huge hole and this huge hole is on it's on the, the western side of the estate and these these guys are just filing right on in. So you come to, you're prone. They, uh, there's really nobody else running past you. The the force is pretty much. They probably thought you were dead or whatnot. Probably a guard mm -hmm. and thought you were dead. So now you're you're outside. Uh, you have you know there's all kinds of uh, these thugs or whatever you want to say. They're they're running around around the house. So you, you pretty much have the entire compound or the entire yard uh, with several structures on in flames and whatnot, and you could possibly get back in there. You probably could get back in there if, if you're if you're kind of weighing it to uh, Yeah, weighing I'll, your I'll kind of I'll kind of really look to the front door. Yeah, this uh, this uh, resin also as you as you open up, it, it was is basically just like a uh, deterrent to to knock you out, and uh, you know your neck's a little sore from this, but seeing that you're a you know a stout dwarf, you you, you pretty much <laughs> shook off the you know the the effects of this poison rather quickly. So sure, so I'll kind of look at the door, and I mean, is there a, a straight shot, or is there anybody kind of in the way? Uh, there's a. Uh, there are a couple people beating on the front door. You can see that they have one of those uh, handheld logs that they're kind of getting a, you know, they have straps wrapped around their arms and, you know, slung over their shoulders and they're ramming this thing on the door. Poof. But there's also, there's a back door. There's also the hole on the side uh, of the western wall where you're at. And you can see that there's other uh, thugs and stuff running around to the other side of the estate too. Now, Curlio and does it Philo. Look... Yep, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, does it look like there's, like, is there anybody by the window where Ravi, like, of the room that Ravi was staying? Yeah, actually, or... you can you can see that uh, there is a couple of figures there. You're not too sure if it's the guards, but you know that there are guards up into that room, uh, and you know that Dawson is up there as well. But as well, yeah, the, I meant like uh, like outside. Is there anybody like no cl the trying to climb up there? there? Yeah, no. yeah, no, no. Okay, They're but then I will make my way to the front of the door the... to try to stop them from opening. Okay, sure. There's a there's a couple of guys. There's a two two humans up there that are at the doors. You you know you're staggering up there. You can see two of these guys are taking this battering ram and working in unison trying to knock the massive door down and they're they're having a they're having a hard time with it so they don't see you creeping up on them so that's where we're going to leave it where you're at now uh gildan you see all of this going on and you you actually see a couple of uh from your vantage point you can see that a couple weird creatures are coming inside of this place too not you know they look like some type of monstrosity or something uh, they have like a like flaming heads and whatnot. Now, oh, nice. Helioa and Philo, what say you? Because you guys are just uh, you guys I get out of bed and sleep for a couple of hours, and now all of a sudden, bam! It's like the the world is just tumbling down all around you. And this place is shaking, dust is coming off of the ceiling. I I get up and stumble into my you know stumble into my clothes, try to get them on, get my uh, crossbow and my pack and everything ready. And then I'm going to uh, stumble out the door and say, what's what's going on? Is it an earthquake? <laughs> you can hear this in the hall there, Gildan. And and the door uh, where Ravi is at, that door just stays shut. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, once I hear the noise, is there a, if there's a window in the room, then I'll check the window to see what all the noise is coming from. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of windows. Yeah, you can see that down below. You mm -hmm. can see that uh, as you 
fling open the, the shutters and you, you kind of, you know, push the blinds to the side and, and open up that window, uh, 